What? Which, wait a minute. What did I set this to? There we go. What? Has this ever happened to you? I hope it hasn't. But if it has, you're going to remember it. That's for sure. For some reason, your password doesn't work anymore. You're locked out of the system. You can't get on. No matter what password you think it is, it's not working. Well, what are you going to do? Oh, my God, did somebody change your password? Hey, it could have been your grandkid banging on the keyboard while he was sitting on your lap and you weren't looking. Maybe you were watching the game out of the corner of your eye while he was playing something on, uh, uh, on Google. Who knows? But the fact is, you're locked out. Traditional methods of correcting this, well, the most well-known, of course, is to reinstall the uh, computer, reinstall the operating system. Uh, you can do that in a way that, you know, protects your data, where your data doesn't get wiped out, but you're still going to be reinstalling all your software all over again and setting up all the configurations, most likely, that, you know, uh, were in there. So that probably isn't the most optimal choice. There are uh, very expensive tools out there that can go in and reset your password. Uh, you know, of course, you have to boot off another operating system, and there's all sorts of other things. But uh, for the most part, um, you're in a tight spot. Well, you know, my name's Stu. My call sign AG6AG, and I'm here to try to help you figure this one out. I happen to like a tool out there called the System Rescue CD. System Rescue CD project is an open source project, so you can download this tool for free and use it for free. Downside, it's kind of complicated. And uh, you're going to be doing stuff at a command line, which uh, some people are really nervous about. If you're nervous about using a command line, you probably are going to want to take it to a professional and pay some money if you can. Of course, if it's an emergency, it's awfully handy to know how to do this. Anyway, hey, if you happen to think of it, click down on the subscribe button for me. It really helps me out. And uh, if you like the video, click on like. Well, with that, let's go, and get, go ahead and get started with Clearing the password with a system rescue CD. All right, well, we've managed to download our rescue CD. We've managed to get it burned onto a USB or a CD-ROM. And we've managed to boot. Now what? Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select how we want the system rescue CD to load. My preference is always to copy the system into RAM, okay? Uh, that's fairly easy to do just by selecting boot, system rescue, and copy system to RAM. This makes it function a little faster, so let's go ahead and select that one. And we're going to go ahead and boot up into the system rescue CD. And remember, you're going to be using Linux commands here to make this all work. Um, so it's a lot like being at the command prompt in uh, DOS, but not quite. Linux has its own set of commands. It's a Unix-based operating system, and it obeys all that. If you have any terminal experience in Unix, you should have no problem with the concepts here. Um, this is a complicated thing to do. So there's a few processes. Let's break down what we need to do. Step one is we need to figure out which 
hard drive partition has the Windows operating system on it. So that typically is the largest partition. I'm going to use a command from the command line. I'm going to type in P-A-R-T-E-D followed by a space and a dash L. And this is going to list all the partitions on all the drives on the system. So when I hit enter, it shows that, all right, my first drive is 136 gig and it is disk forward slash dev forward slash SDA and it contains three partitions partition number one number two and number three and if I look at the size of the partitions I can see that one of them is bigger than the other two and that is partition number two and based on the flags I'm going to say that is probably my Windows partition. Now down below there it lists my CD but it doesn't come up with much there so we're not going to worry too much about that. And pretty much you're always going to be looking at dev SDA okay with a default install for Windows. Now I have to access that drive and the way you access storage it doesn't come up as drive letters it actually has to be mounted as a directory on the operating system. If I do a DF, it shows what's mounted right now on it, and I need to find a directory to mount SDA2, or the SDA drive partition to, um, onto the system where I can access it. So I'm going to start by making a directory, and that command is mkdir, and we'll just call it Windows so we have an identifier for it. Now, I'm going to look at the root. The forward slash is the root directory in Linux, and I can see that I have a Windows directory right now on the system. Now I have to mount that partition. So I'm going to command mount dev sda2, because remember it's hard drive sd, oop, I put one, hard drive sda partition 2, and I'm going to mount that on the Windows directory uh, slash Windows. Okay, These slashes have to do with directories and not command line switches. It's important that you understand that. All right. And no errors. Looks like it's mounted. I can do DF now, and if I compare from the upper one to the lower one, you're going to see that I have that Windows partition now mounted. So dev sda2 is mounted under slash Windows. Now, if I change directory here to the root, I can see Windows. If I cd to Windows, I can look in here, and there are all the Windows files that were on my hard drive, right? They still are. I'm just mounting it through a different operating system. So let's get to what we were going to get to. I need to clear a password on this so I can get back on this machine and get back to work. So I'm going to use a command chntpw and I'm going to follow it by a space and put a dash i for interactive so I can interact with the program and then I'm going to give the entire path to my um, SAM file. And the SAM file is where all the passwords are stored. Now, I've got to go to the directory that I mounted, which is slash Windows. I want to go into the Windows folder in that hard drive. I want to go to the System32 folder under Windows. And then I want to go to the config folder. And under there is a SAM file, all in caps. Now, caps are very important, by the way, in Unix and Linux operating systems. Everything you type is case sensitive. Remember that. It's not like DOS. Now, once I have this all in there, that's chntpw-i for interactive, and the uh, entire path and name of the uh, SAM file, if I hit enter, it's going to open that SAM file and grant me access to it. So I have a few different choices. I'm going to choose number one, which is edit user data and passwords. Now, the account I'm trying to get into is the stew account, and it's an admin account. 
So what I want to do is I want to select the STU account, which is, if I look on the left, I can see the RID, and the RID for STU is 03EB. And if I look here, it's saying enter the RID or 0 to exit. And at this point, the RID that's chosen is 3EB, which is the one I want right because you can see that in the square brackets if i wanted to go into a different account i could like i could type uh, 1f4 if i wanted to unlock the admin account or something like that but let's hit enter and that's going to take me into that rid account and you can see up at the top the user edit it shows me comments user uh, and some the groups i'm in and all that i have several different account bits i can change um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select one to clear or blank the password. Okay, just like that. It now has blanked my password. From here, uh, also, by the way, if the account was locked, I could have the opportunity to select two to unlock the account as well. Uh, let's do that anyway. I'll hit two just in case it's locked. And then I'll hit quit. And then I'll uh, hit quit. And it should ask me if I want to save. I'm going to say yes. And it has now written the SAM file. Now, I want to unmount that uh, file system before I go to reboot the computer back into Windows. So I'm going to type in CD and hit enter to change into my root home directory. So I'm not in the Windows home directory and then I'm going to unmount or umount Windows because Windows is the name of the folder that we use to mount it. I can do a DF and confirm it's unmounted. Everything's put away. Let's go ahead and type in reboot. And while this is rebooting, we will unplug our disk and be set to go. All right, well, we managed to get ourselves uh, back into Windows. Let's go ahead and notice there's my account. There's no request for a password. So let's go ahead and just sign in and see what happens. Now, if all went well, I should be back on the system. And again, you know, uh, I know it was complicated to do this. I understand. And... Um, but with a little practice, you'll feel more and more comfortable with it. The Unix operating system, the Linux operating system, is a very powerful operating system. It allows you to do all sorts of things that uh, you really can't within a Windows operating system. One last thing that I need to make sure that I do, I've got to do a Control-Alt-Delete. And I need to select Change Password. And I need to change this password to something that actually works for me. Um, not that hard. And I will go ahead and hit this. And now the password is something that I know and I should be able to go in and use at any time. Anyway, that's it. That's how you unlock a system that's been locked by somebody else or accidentally had its password changed. I hope that this helps you in all your endeavors working with Windows. This is Stu, AG6AG. Well, I know, I know, it's a bit complicated. And, uh, you know, uh, there are tools out there that you can buy that uh, do it a lot easier but the key word is you got to buy them. Uh, also, you know, if uh, you happen to be an amateur radio operator such as I, and uh, you're called into an EOC during a disaster in order to operate the digital station, and you go to log into the PC there, and you can't get onto it, and nobody knows the password because the last guy that was in there thought it was uh, a lousy password and decided to change it since he figured he'd be the only one that would ever use it which turns out isn't the truth, um, then you are going to need to be able to think on your feet. And that is why I keep the Rescue CD on a 
uh, USB stick so I can boot off of USB in an emergency and get the password reset. Because let's face it, if you're in an EOC and you can't get on the PC, you're not going to be doing any digital now, are you? Anyway, hey, if you happen to think of it, click the subscribe button. And if you liked my video, click down there on like. Uh, and you know what? Any questions or comments, please make them down in the comments below here. And I, I usually answer all the comments within a couple of days. So please, if you have a directed question, go ahead and put it down there. Um, this is going to be the first of probably three or four additional videos talking about stuff that you can do with System Rescue CD. So uh, if you like this, again, subscribe so you'll see those when they come out. This is Stu, AG6AG, and I'm hoping I'll see you out there on the air.